What's going on YouTube? Gabriel right here representing the movement towards improvement. MTI coming at you. Today's video we're with my buddy Blair. What's going on? We're going to do a little course of vlog action, film every hole, film every shot. We're also going to ask Blair some questions. Blair, I thought of some questions to ask you. We're going to talk about one, why are you so good? <laughs> okay. Blair's lowest uh, tournament score is 61. Secondly, so what would one piece of advice be? Uh, what what one piece of advice would you have given a younger version of yourself? And three, what's the biggest best tip that has helped your game, whether it be swing change or mental? So yeah, we'll have a fun day, film some holes, and ask Blair some questions. Yeah. You didn't tell me about this game. I you never, didn't tell me. I never tell anybody about what I'm Fuck. gonna do. I'm having a nervous breakdown, bro. I thought my swing with my longer clubs looked pretty good at Carmel Mountain that day. They looked good earlier when you were just warming up. Were they? Yeah. I wish I could see. What are you working on your swing right now, Blair? Mm, set up. I've been staying kind of up a little bit on my on the ball lately, and like my weight has been more like back, and so I would have to lift or whatever. I'll, I'll take it inside. You'll see on some, on like especially the video when we were doing their little rider cup thing. I mean, I was really swinging it bad. I was kind of like taking inside, lifting, and then just kind of coming down like this, a little almost over the top. So I had those shanks, you know. So I'm working shanks on, are no good. Shanks are not good, and so I'm working on you know getting a little more of a powerful posture, but it's also softer at the same time. Like before, my grip was really tight, so now I'm just kind of kind of easing into my setup here, so it just feels a little more natural. Shoulders hanging a little bit more, and so basically I'm trying to get to a, back to this plane where my shaft is. So when I on my way down, it's basically back to where it was at at setup, and that way I can just fire through and exit and the club face stays square. So you see if my shoulder's up through impact, it's either going to go out open or I'm going to flip on it and turn it closed. And so if I can kind of keep this left shoulder down and keep this the shaft plane correct like this, then I can just rotate through the ball and it won't turn. See how it stays, wants to stay square? Okay. So I'm working on that. And uh, you know, before I had those duck hooks, you know, and by doing this, I think my only miss is right. I only have missed one to the left in a while unless I really really fucked it up so kind of eliminates the left no one wants to hit it hit it left you know that is right i've had many left shots over the years too good ball yeah. Step now. oh look at me i'm, all, go I'm in. all over this damn thing three in a row inside of a foot It's hard to do when the camera gets on too. That's still solid. I take that in a minute. Yeah. Just in regular round. It is hard to do when the camera's on. I'm like, I'm like to totally nervous. Oh, oh this is nice. It's gotta go in. Go right. Damn it. There Watch it is. Oh, uh, it's a little long maybe. No, that's solid. It's Woo! Spin. Super spin. Yeah, nice shot. Look at that spread. That's nice. I'll that is that. nice. All right. Okay, me and Blair are gonna start on hole 10 over here, Woods Valley. Blair's been playing this course since it first opened up. We play hundreds of rounds yeah, here. Yeah. Uh, Blair, I want to ask you a quick question. If you're warming up on the range, let's say before a regular round or a tournament, and you're not hitting good, um, do you get scared going into the regular round because of that? Uh, in the tournament round? Yeah, tournament or regular. Well, I'm not gonna lie. I, I mean, I, I think you naturally do, because I, but I've been extremely like I'm just hitting the ball bad. I'm like I have no clue what I'm doing. But you always have to have like a kind of a go-to shot. Like I, for instance, I had a tournament. A few months back, I was on the range, and I, I literally hit the worst on the, I've never I've ever hit in a tournament. And so I, was, I got on the golf course. I was like, so what's the only shot that I can hit? The course wasn't like crazy difficult, but it was really cold and really windy, and so it made it difficult. Where you, like you had to hit a lot of different shots. But I was like, but I just committed to one shot, and it was like this slam cut where I just sit up here and just chop low cut it all day. I mean, with driver with everything. I was like, it's the only thing I can keep in play. The only thing I know is gonna cut. As long as you make sure it cuts, you know, it's not that hard to control. Like for instance, I had a par three that was into the wind with over water. I was like 158 in the wind, and I chopped a six iron, and I put on the green par. I ended up shooting 68. I got solo second that tournament, so and made a lot of made some money. So it, that was my example of like if you're hitting it bad on the range and you're going to tournament, you have to go to something that you just know you can hit. Like even if it's the ugliest piece of shit shot you're ever gonna hit in your life. Okay, thanks for sharing. You're welcome. Okay, hole 10, 389 yards. Blair's gonna use my three wood. I just give it to anybody. It's mine now. It's, Blair, it's Blair's three wood. He can have it, and he hits it really good. 
Oh. That'll work. Right. No, that, that'll be okay. Oh, yep. yeah. That's why you hit that club off the tee. Yeah, no kidding. Man. That puts you like the widest part of the fairway. Yeah. Perfect. Look at that swing. Okay, Blair's up here in the left part of the fairway. I'm right there at the edge of the rough. Almost went in the water, but we're okay. Yeah. Uh, 120 to the pin, Blair. What club you got? I got a 52. It's slightly uphill. I'd like to hit something. I don't know how these greens are reacting right now. I'd like to hit something land it maybe around 115 that's pretty low so it bounces and stops you know since, since it's uphill it's not going to spin back anyway so i don't like to flirt with back pins i don't like to go hit full shots in the back pins because i don't want to go long you know so i'm going to try to control like kind of like a little low draw that was not low but it should be all right okay yeah. nice little draw in there got it all right gabers tell me what you got here Okay, I got 115 yards, just five yards in front of Blair with my driver. Um, I hit my gap wedge about full 120. I'm on a, a slight uphill sl slope right here, um, so I kind of have to choke up a little bit, and it's going to take some yards off. So I'm going to take like a full, hard gap wedge, and I think I can't go long either, so I think it's a good club. Oh, beautiful. It's all over the pin there. Should be good. Good shot. Yep. Okay, Blair says I'm in some nasty, nasty you can do rough. It, it's like explode it. All you gotta do is land it like right here. I didn't make it, so. That'd be cool if you did. That actually shouldn't be too hard. No, you just gotta land it a foot. It's right. like that shot I hit at Carmel and like slice across it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blair's about 22 feet just off the green, the lob wedge. Ooh. Oh, get there. That wasn't really fault. That's really soft. Yeah, what the hell? It landed like super, super soft for that. Yeah, you just gotta. Like a little one foot explosion almost. Well, maybe a little bit more. You can land this on the green if he hits it high enough. Oh, yeah. That's a beaut. Shot. Yeah, try to chip it. Switch it. Oh, that's good. You old Byron Nelson, you. Okay, Blair, about four feet. Gotta place two balls out. Okay, good putt. Thank you. Okay, hole 11 here, par 5, 490 yards. This is the hole uh, you've seen in other videos where the fairway was more burnt out, slopes left to right, but they actually resodded it so it looks a lot more green out there. So we'll just hit driver and see what happens. This is the hole that I capped off my best run of my life on with Paul when I was 16. What was that? When I birdied 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and eagled this hole. So I was 900 for 8 holes. It was like freaking the craziest thing ever. And then. As a 16 year old being that low, I ended up shooting 9 under. <laughs> oh. I was like, 59, 59! Oh, yeah. no good. That was fun though. That was, that was the best run I've still ever been on. God damn it. This will be a good telltale of how the fairway is. I think it looks pretty soft. Oh, jeez. Oh, wow. That was gnarly. Well, it went straight right. It was like a duck hook. And it left was like, center. Yes, yeah, so it was well, a it toe. A hook. It was like a toe draw. Yeah. Land left center and stayed there, so he's okay. Yeah, I'll take it. That's a lot better than how this fairway used to be. That would have been hazard all day, dude. There's a couple tee boxes at any really course where they'll kind of point you in different directions. So some of these tee boxes kind of point you towards the road. Just kind of be aware if a tee box is pointing you a certain way, you kind of you know might need to fight it a little bit more. But try to hit a nice little fade driver. All right, good swing. A little cut skis. Well, it's more like it's frustrating when you see your swing and you're doing something wrong that you've been working on and not doing. That's you know, yeah, frustrating because that just means you have to go back and start all over again. Keep you know? working. Yeah. So as you can see, they resodded this. This all used to be dirt, if you remember from my old videos. 184 front pin. Yeah. Don't want to be short. Rather be a little long. Yeah. I kind of probably could hit a six iron, but I brought my five and four, so I'll have to be a five. So 184, it's downwind, so I'll play like 180, but I gotta choke up again because I'm on uphill lie. It'll take distance off. I'm just gonna try to feel like a nice, full, smooth five iron. I'm not gonna rip at it though, it's like 70 percenter. I'll try to leave it right, if anything. Oh man, that's all over the damn pin. It's gonna be enough. Oh, perfect. 
Nice swing, dude. Look at this divot. Well, yeah, that's all fresh sod, man. Yeah. You you caught you caught on the other cube back there, and so yeah, that's not never oh, gonna be pretty. Oh well, hit good it shot, good. That was perfect. On 174, and I am going to hit an eight iron. Now, do you aim a little right, Blair, because yeah. you're on a side uphill slope? Yeah, definitely. You know, and usually, like, I find that power drives go farther, too, you know, with shorter irons. So I like something, when I try to, like, kind of max out, you know, I don't really think I have to max on this 8-iron, because I think my stock, like, basic 8-iron is, like, 168-ish. But, you know, a little uphill and I'm downwind, so, like, I, I'll swing a full 8-iron here, and I think I should be good. You're right. Good shot. Thank you. Okay, me and Blair technically have a couple eagle putts, even though it's playing like a moderately to long par four. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is my ball, about 25 feet. Blair puts about 15. Some good shots. Really good shots, actually. This screen's gonna be so slow. Yeah, this screen always tends to be a bit slower. It's always had some problems. Probably gonna be so severe, they kind of have to make it slow. All right, we got Gabe here for eagle. Quickly move the two under. Alright. Nice birdie, dude. Got it there. Yeah, that's impressive. Let's tap it in. Boy. Alright, good bird. Thank you, sir. Blair, uphill, right to left. 16.7 inches. <laughs> that was a good putt. I played way too much break. Let's say inside left. <laughs> I think it's more straight. Either one. Alright, good birdie. Easy birdies. Yeah, I'll take it. Regardless, we hit two good shots in there. Okay, hole 12, 334 to the pin. Blair's gonna... You going, like, you swinging hard at it? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't think I'll... Get, I don't know if I'll necessarily get there, because I don't think these fairways run enough to actually get it there. But, I mean, I'll, I'll just put a good one on it. Okay. Oh, that'll be good. I'll have to run it now that's gonna hit the oh that's gonna be perfect. This is gonna hit the car path. Oh, oh there it goes. Oh oh, oh my God. no. Was that did it in the green side bunker? I don't know. We'll see. Blair hit the car path and anything just well, shot. It was like dirt path. It almost yeah. looked like it went past the green side bunker. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> okay, right now I haven't been playing or practicing very much, hence I'm not hitting the ball as good. So for me, if I'm not playing good, I play more conservative. So 330. If I hit a 200, 220 shot, I have 100, 120 in. So I'm just going to hit a four iron. That'll do it. Okay, I got 133. Now, I usually only hit my gap wedge 120. But this hole, for some reason, plays shorter. It's slightly downhill, but it's downwind. I usually don't like swinging too hard at a wedge. But honestly, I think if I just hit this nice and full and get it up in the air and let the wind take it, um, should give me a 133 even though I'm only going to be swinging like a 120 yard swing. That's like the benefits of knowing your course. Looks good. Looks really good. It's even better now. Oh man, that's a, that's a dime. That went past the pin. It did, that's amazing. So it's like 135 but I didn't, I didn't, I can't hit this that far. It's just that wind. I knew yeah, if I get high enough. That ball was going too. I didn't even think you had enough to get in there. That's awesome. Nice yeah, swing. Alright, Blair's got a severe uh, right to left slope. I mean, this thing's at least 45 degrees. Yeah. Um, so do you like aim right at that bunker or what I'm do you have to face? I'm not gonna aim that right. I have, I usually pick a spot in my mind and it's right, as of right now, it's gonna be just left of the fringe. I think if I land on the green, even though it's not gonna come out with any spin, it's kinda gonna come out dead. With the way the greens are, I'm not gonna go long, you know? Like if I land it where I wanna land, I think it's gonna be well. It's just gonna roll up nice and soft. So are you opening the face at all or choking up? Um, yeah, a little bit. Not much for either though. I feel like this thing could up like de lofting and coming out more hot. Yeah, yeah, it will come out. It will come out kind of hot and knuck, but it will also come out with no spin. That, that's exactly. what I'm banking on it to come out with no spin. Okay. You know, I don't think it's gonna come out as hot as much as it's gonna have no spin, and I think I can control that a little better. Okay. Yeah, I hit that terribly. I mean, I, I aimed it. I hit it right with aiming, but I crushed it. It was just a bad shot. Yeah, it's, like you said, this is one you got to be real good on your feels because you don't practice a lot of those. Yeah. yeah. All right, 30 feet, kind of goes uphill left to right. It goes back downhill first and then uphill left to right. Yeah. I got a little spot that I'm aiming at. Hopefully I can hit it there and hopefully I end up reading it correctly. You know? 
Just good speed mainly on these, huh? Yeah, but I have this feeling I gotta whack it. There it is. Yahtzee! Yeah, that was pure. Oh shit. No way. I didn't get it. Are you fucking serious? Yeah. There's yeah. no way. That sucks, dude. Unreal, man. I, how many times do you make a fucking 35 footer, you know? You just, you don't make it very often, man. That fucking blows. I don't when think did we, it go off? Like, I, I think right in the middle of the putt. Let's see. I feel like it straightens out a lot at the end. I mean, from your view, it might, it might break a little bit more, but you, guess, you definitely gotta whack it, dude. Oh. Almost pretty close to yeah, that would have been pretty cool if we both made those putts. Okay, 160 yards. What club you got, Blair? I got a nine. Got a nine I'm iron. I'm thinking I'm gonna just, just moonball the crap out of Downwind. it. Downwind. Yeah, I think I'm gonna hit it really high and kind of let it bleed off. The I'm right. gonna get your back swing in this one. Yeah, thank you. So, okay, you guys, I uh, wanna talk about my Hawaii trip a little bit um, to go work with Kelvin Me here. One of the things he's learned from me, and I'm gonna learn more if I get over there, is different release styles. So basically, there's kind of three variations of a release. We call this one a flip, where someone adds loft like this. Okay, this usually ends up adding loft, which adds spin, which usually takes off distance. It might help you hit it heavy, right? Because you're kind of releasing this angle. Um, then we have a rolling release, right? This is what a lot of slicers do. The club face is really open. And if they hit it, it goes right, starts right. If they time it just right, it might go straight. And then if they overdo it, it goes left, left. So you kind of have this under flip, a rolling release. And what Kelvin teaches is something he's coined is called a drive hold release. Something where we get the hands ahead of impact and we square the club face up early and we keep it stable through the ball. So there's not this big closure rate. This is not this flipping and obviously that's easy to say, but one of the things I want to learn from Kelvin is how to do that. How, what are the mechanics? And there's a lot of different variations for a lot of different swings, just depending on what grip you have. Um, and that's something Blair's always done really well, and that's why he's been a good ball strike. If you look at Blair's uh, hands in slow-mo in the club face, it stays really square. His hands are ahead, and it stays square through the ball. So he doesn't have a lot of this timing. Um, that's why his contact's good as well. So. Um, I'll be starting this fundraiser for Hawaii um, next Tuesday, you guys. Like I mentioned in an Instagram post, I'm going to give Kelvin, who's been teaching the game for 30 years, $1,000. And everything he shows me and teaches me for $1,000, I'm going to give to you guys for 50 bucks. So I'm going to film as much as I can. And if you guys have seen my videos in the past, you know I take you guys everywhere I go, whether it be Arizona, Legacy, Raspberry, doing visits with junior golfers or you know, mini tour pros or other instructors or long drive events or with Blair like these, you know, I do my best to deliver. So if I go to Hawaii, I'm going to do my best to deliver everything I learned for $1,000 to you guys. So I'll keep everyone updated for the fundraiser and yeah, it should be good stuff. Okay, thanks for watching part one of this course vlog series. You guys hit me up on Facebook, Gabriel M. Ryder, Instagram, PG Tour Driven. Make sure to leave comments below what other questions you want to ask me or Blair. Um, yeah. So stay tuned.